This is a pointer. A pointer in C is just a variable that holds the memory address of another variable. Simple enough, right? So then, what is this? Well, it's not exactly a pointer, but it uses pointers. It's also stupidly complicated to decipher, and it probably shouldn't exist, but sometimes you just run into them. At least in theory. So today, I'm gonna go through some of the most obscure declarations that I could find and explain them until you all understand, or until I go insane. Whatever happens first. Quick disclaimer, I don't have 20 years of experience working on this, I'm just a university student who just got this question in his last exam, and who was also delusional about being a YouTuber, so I'll take all this information with a grain of salt. I'm also not gonna explain the basis on pointers, as that has been covered enough in this platform already, so if you're unsure about it, you can check these videos from these guys, for example. Shout out to them, even though they have more subscribers than I do, so they probably don't. As we established before, this is as simple as you can get with a pointer. In this case, x is just a pointer to an integer, and once we allocate enough memory for it, we can use it to store the data that we need. This works the same way for any data type. For example, if I use this struct fucker, the process is exactly the same. I just have to allocate enough memory for it, set the data however I want it, and then don't forget to free the memory after that, otherwise, I don't know, something bad will happen. And if you look at the memory, you can see that this is the address of the pointer, this is the address that the pointer stores, and this is the value that it's stored in the address. One last thing to mention about basic pointers is that they can be used as arrays, by allocating the necessary number of slots. Now this is where people usually start getting confused. See, you can have a pointer pointing to a pointer that points to a pointer that is at the same time pointing to another pointer, but who cares? At that point, just change your implementation. In my two months of experience, I haven't seen anything worse than a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. And that usually means that you either have a very obscure way of passing data through functions, or you just have a multidimensional array or some data structure. The last type of pointer that I have to cover before moving on to the weird stuff is a function pointer. You see, you can have a function pointer by doing this. And all that means is that x is now a pointer to a function that receives a string as an input and returns nothing. The first question that mostly everyone asks when they see this for the first time is, why? And the second question is also, why? And to answer that, function pointers are quite useful. For example, if you want to have things similar to callbacks or just change the implementation of a function depending on the context. In this case, we have a sorting algorithm that receives a function to determine the comparator used, such as ascending or descending. And then we just call the appropriate one wherever we need it. Okay, now that we have the bases covered, we can start with the stupid-ass declarations. So what is this? Well, we know that x here is a function that returns a pointer. So now the question is, a pointer to what? Well, a pointer to an integer. But now if we add this, it's no longer pointing to just one integer, it's pointing to 20 integers. So the real answer is, x is a function that returns a pointer that points to an array of 20 integers. You're still following me, right? Now the next one. In this case, we know that x is a pointer. A pointer to what? Well, a pointer to an array of pointers. And what are those pointers pointing to? Functions that return an integer. So the final answer is that x is a pointer to an array of pointers to functions that return an integer. And if that sounds too stupid, we can break it down a bit by declaring these two functions that return integers, add and subtract. We also can declare a pointer to an array containing pointers to them, and then call those functions by referencing the corresponding index in the pointer like this. Does it make sense to you? because it still doesn't to me. Hey, this is a quick reminder that if you're enjoying watching me suffer, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Just, just smash, you can tell that I'm not used to doing this. But you know what I'm used to doing? Using Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is a learning platform that focuses on a wide range of topics in the areas of math and science, and it allows you to do hands-on problem solving, which translates into a more efficient learning curve. People sometimes ask me, hey Bolt, how can I learn programming? And to be honest, Brilliant is a pretty good way of learning these tricky new concepts. When it comes to learning algorithms, for example, it is not enough to memorize the concepts. And Brilliant does a great job at helping you internalize them with proper explanations and simulations. On top of that, the lessons are quite sure and fast-paced, which means that you can easily build up a habit of using the platform a few minutes per day and you'll be steadily improving in whatever area you would choose. One of the hottest topics in the past year has been LLMs and machine learning, and Brilliant has launched a ton of new content in these areas. It is perfect for newcomers who want to understand how these new technologies work. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org molt or click the link in the description. You also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Now this is a question I had in my exam, and I'm gonna break it down here. Following the same method, we know that x here is an array of 8 length arrays of pointers to functions that return a pointer to an array of pointers to characters. So this is just 
x is an array of 8 length array of pointers to functions returning a pointer to one array of characters. See, it's not that difficult. But if you have this in your code, what the fuck is wrong with you? <sighs> Let's go again, okay? We know that x is an array of pointers to pointers. What are those pointers pointing to? They point to functions. Functions that return a pointer to an array of pointers. And those pointers point to functions that return a pointer to a character or a string. I don't fucking know. And the full answer is x is an array of pointer to pointer to functions returning a pointer to an array of pointers to a function returning pointer to characters. Sorry, to one character. Easy. Okay, let's do this one last time. We know that x is an array of pointers to pointers. Pointers that point to functions that receive a pointer to a character and a pointer to a function that receives a pointer to a character and returns a pointer to an end. Now the function I was talking about, not the second one, but the first one, returns a pointer to an array of pointers of functions that receive a pointer to a pointer to a character and a pointer to a function that returns a pointer to a character as arguments. And those functions, not the first one or the second one, but the third one, kinda, return a pointer to an integer. So the full answer is, x is an array of pointers to pointers to functions that receive a pointer to a character and a pointer to a function that receives a pointer to a character and returns a pointer to an integer and returns a pointer to an array of pointers to functions that receive a pointer to a pointer of characters and a pointer to a function that returns a pointer to a character as arguments and return a pointer to an integer. And that's it. I'm not gonna double check that. But hey, if somebody asks you, you know how to fucking read this, so don't ask me.